Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin lecturing computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video we're going to learn how to calculate a weighted moving average in Excel 2010. So before we start let's take a look at some data. Here I have some sales figures for a fictitious product for a period of one year and the figures represent the sales figures for each month of that year. So you can see in January 2011 right down to December 2011 my sales figures for the year. And I want to use these data to help me with some time series analysis to help me calculate my weighted moving average. And this is going to do two things for me. First of all, it's going to help me what we call smoothen the data. So in time series analysis, we're looking to uh, detect trends and patterns and sometimes making the data a bit smoother, in other words, uh, removing variation, will help us get a better analysis for our data. So for example, over here on the right-hand side, I have a graph of the existing sales figures that you see here, plotted against each month, and you can see there's quite a lot of variation up and down throughout the 12 months of the year. So time series analysis using my weighted moving average is going to help me smoothen this data. So we'll do that towards the end of the video. The other thing I'd like to be able to do is to use weighted moving average to help me calculate a sales figure to predict future behavior. And I want to do this for get a sales figure for January, which I don't have yet. So to do all of that, I'm going to need a formula. And the formula is over here on the bottom right hand side in the brown box. And the two letters on this, F and A, represent forecast demand, that's F, and actual demand, that's A. And unlike a simple moving average where I just add up three time periods and divide them by three if I want a three month moving average, this time I'm going to add a weighting. So I want to give um, highest weighting to the month that's closest to my current month. So let's say I want to calculate the moving weighted moving average for April. So that would be the forecast for April, that's T, uh, that's equal to, and you need to watch the brackets in this formula here to, to uh, overcome precedence. And I'm going to give the highest weighting to T minus 1. So T minus 1, April minus 1 is March. So that's the closest month, and I'm going to give it a weighting of 3. So 3 times the actual demand for T minus 1, plus the next weighting is 2 times the demand, actual demand for T minus 2. April minus 2 is February, so that's going to be the actual demand for February. And plus, finally, a 1, a weighting of 1 for T minus 3, which is January. So the actual demand for T minus 3 January will be multiplied by 1. And then we divide that by 6 because that's the cumulative 3 plus 2 plus 1 weighting that we have applied in our formula. So let's insert that in here in, in the April cell, that's D5, to going to use that formula in here. Remember, it's a three-month weighted moving average I'm using, so therefore I can't do this calculation for January, February, or March because I simply don't have enough months. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put in my equal sign, and then I need to be careful with brackets here. So I want to put this top line of my formula in, a, in brackets and then use brackets for each part of the formula. So I'm going to start out with two opening brackets here, one for um, all the formulas and one for the first formula in here. And I'm going to put in 3 multiplied by, that's asterisk, uh, T A for actual demand for T minus 1, which is March. So I'm going to click on that cell here, use a closing bracket. And now I want to add, so plus opening bracket again, 2 times the uh, weighting of 2 for the T minus 2, which is February. So I'm going to click on that, that's cell C3, closing bracket plus an opening bracket again to put in my final um, actual demand, which is T minus 3. So that's 1. I don't need to put this in, but I'm putting it in for illustration here. 1 multiplied by the actual demand for January. So do the closing bracket for that. And then I need to, to enclose all of this in another closing bracket, and then divide by 6 and hit Enter. And that gives me a figure of 8,503. So that's my moving average figure, predicted figure, for the um, April timeframe based on the previous three. So now I want to copy this formula down, so I'm going to use Excel's fill tool here. So I'll grab the bottom right hand corner of the cell and drag it down to December. And that then will give me a weighted moving average for each of my months. Remember, I don't have any for the first three months, so I have a weighted moving average for the remaining nine months of the year. 
And of course, to help me predict what the January figure would be, I just copy that formula down by one more cell here. And in this here, I'm going to highlight it in yellow and make it bold to make it more visible. I've got a weighted moving average of 10,699. So using this analysis here, by using weighted moving average, um, I'm saying that my predicted figure for January will be 10,699 sales. And that figure there is based on a weight of December, November and October, with December getting a weighting of 3, November getting a weighting of 2, and November, October, sorry, getting a weighting of 1. So that's given me prediction for January, but what about smoothening out my data? So the simplest thing to do here is to draw another um, chart. So I'm going to select my uh, all my dates to give me my labels, and I'm going to select the corresponding weighted moving averages, even though there's no values for January, February, or March. Use the insert ribbon, select line, and I'm going to use the um, line with markers option here. Let me take out the uh, series here and just make the graph a little bit smaller. Move it over here, over all my data. And I can see that my data have been smoothened out a little bit. Um, I don't have any figures for the first three months, as you can see here. So I can compare my graphs. I'm just going to make them the same height here so that they look um, as correspond as much as possible. Uh, and you can see that there's slightly less variation over the time period for my uh, weighted moving average here. So now I've used the time series analysis to smoothen my data and I can detect trends a little bit better. For example, you can see in my weighted moving average chart, you can see that the actual trend is down towards the end of the year, while in my actual sales figures, you can see that the trend is slightly up. So the smooth, the smooth data with the weighted moving average will give you a better prediction for January and for subsequent sales um, predictions. So that's how you use Excel 2010 to calculate weighted moving average. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.